So the stage is set and now begins. Both the Bulls and the Bears have equal amounts to lose and gain at the same time. Uh, this week was a crazy week. And honestly, the Bears actually haven't done a catastrophic mistake that they may be actually learning from. It is mind-blowing how they've actually learned. And what I'm talking about, guys, is 55,000 at short positions previously last week. And now, as the market fell, they didn't add to their position. They finally decided, hey, let's take a breather and not be dum-dums during this time because over and over they have supplied the market with more and more bull, f uh, sorry, bear fuel to keep going higher as we saw when, when they went 400,000 net short positions causing the biggest 20% rally in the S&P that we've seen in a quite some time. Then again, subsequently in the beginning of 2024 that we saw the January to April rally in the S&P. However, the S&P is not doing too great, right? Um, this week, we basically just crammed horribly. We started off the week pretty interesting. I was like, okay, failed weekly breakout. Okay, let's see, the week is still young. Then we closed above it on Tuesday. I was looking at, okay, here comes Bayer Fuel number rally 267. And then I woke up the next day and it was like the market just decided, hey, it's time to be bearish. We saw the market actually gap down, not fill the gap on Wednesday, subsequently Thursday, just slamming even harder. And it wasn't even really catalyzed, right? We saw Netflix come out on earnings. I did get out of that Netflix play for a break even. Thank God for that, because that was gonna eat my lunch. But you win some, you lose some. Like we said, JP Morgan, Bank of America, that didn't go so well. And subsequently, Netflix kind of just was a wash. So we're gonna see how the rest turn out there. I will be coming out with those plays for you guys in videos coming this week. We got a bunch of earnings upcoming this week. And we want to make sure you guys get all the plays for that. Actually, let's take a look at which ones are coming out this week. We got Tesla. I'll definitely be coming out with a Tuesday video for you guys. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and have bell notifications on so that you know when that video comes out, there'll be an Alphabet and Tesla play for Tuesday. Ironically, those two are reporting at the same time. And then Wednesday, we really don't have anything. We have Vertec. That could be an interesting one. That's like a NVIDIA. Waste management that Fatal talks about on this channel endlessly of being a juggernaut. Chipotle post earnings split. That's going to be interesting. We'll make sure to give you guys update on that. However, I won't be doing earnings plays for those because they don't have a lot of option liquidity. The main things we're going to be talking about, maybe the airlines could be an interesting play, especially after the cloud strike debacle of the century, which still has not been resolved. But you guys want to know a funny fact? Southwest, actually, which has earnings on Thursday, and I expect them to provide excellent guidance. And the reason for that is because they are so stubborn and so cheap that they never upgraded from Windows like 2000 or 1959. And guess what happened? Because of that, they were able to keep their entire system up and running and were the only airline operating in the entire country. So for once, being the cheapest piece of you-know-what in the universe actually paid off, and I expect their guidance to reflect such that. And we have NYCB reporting on Thursday, so it's just going to be an absolute jam-packed one. I will definitely put out a video for you guys about NYCB because, well, we're going to go over it on the live stream that we're going to be streaming Tuesday and Thursday. It's going to be the most juiciest ones uh, during uh, this week. Obviously going to be covering Tesla and Alphabet on Tuesday. And then we'll touch base probably on NYCB for Thursday, and then maybe cover something else along with that we'll leave that up for you guys throw down the comment section below of what you want to see but what you guys are really here for is to understand what's going on with the market and we have to understand what's going on with the nasdaq first i'm changing it up on you guys a little bit because well we normally do the s&p i want to do the nasdaq first because it tells a very interesting story similarly to the s&p i said it was weakness in the nasdaq and i was a little concerned and now we're having basically massive massive selling volume on the indexes and i do want to touch base on one thing that i talked about in the previous video which you guys absolutely destroyed the like button and if you guys could also destroy it for this one. I would greatly appreciate it. That video hit a thousand views. Thank you all so much for that. And that is the Tom Lee expectation of a rotation in the market. Well, if we look at the heat map, yes, it does look like rotation is occurring in the market. However, 
If we jump through the charts real quick for the S&P for the NASDAQ on a weekly basis. So let's go through the weekly massive selling candle on the NASDAQ, massive selling candle on the S&P. So we expect similar sized candles to the upside on RSP really, which would be an indicator of its bullish rotation. And we can clearly see that's not the case here. RSP actually on a net sum across all the companies that were weighted, we saw almost a zero slash a loss, even though we saw a massive push. Thus, that means the broader market was actually selling off. And again, remember, these bigger companies have a lot more money in them. So the concentration of the top six, you would expect this candle to be green, similarly to last week, right? Massive move on the small caps and also the Russell, right? If we look at the previous week, massive rotation. And this week is more of a just absolutely just sell, right? Yes. Russell caught more of a bid, but it was only up 1.74% on the week versus the S&P and NASDAQ, if we take a look at it as a sum, we're down approximately 1.96%, uh, NASDAQ down 4%, so tech took a massive beating. So going back to tech, and let's just clean up the chart, but before we do that, I do wanna denote two things. These two levels that we bounced off of were previous supports, and we're just neglecting them. So this is really forming a very, very bearish trend on the NASDAQ, and let's just clean up the chart just to see where things are setting up for us and how we can play them. So looking at the NASDAQ here, there's a lot of potential to the downside, but I will caution everyone before you go all out and short this thing is you do have support right here sitting right below the weekly breakdown. So if we break down on the NASDAQ, and that's approximately from where we are now to that is approximately 1%. That's a very quick reversal for the NASDAQ, especially with tech. Tech technically gets bid up very, very massively. I would be personally waiting for that breakdown to buy the dip if you bounce off the 50. If we clearly violate the 50, get out, right? That's the point where we start talking about a lot of bearish theories out there because there's not a lot of price action between that at 50 day moving average and any support coming down to 456, 450, right? And I'll make a video for that if we break out of this area to tell you what are the support levels that we need to be looking. That could be your profit areas. But for me, I'm not going to go short on the market net until we get below this 50 day moving average. That means something statistically is breaking. It's also hard level that is gonna give you a very clear indication of bullish or bearish. So now that we established the bearish theory, and how this can be fueled to the upside is we bounce off the 50, break back above 473.82, and then continue higher to 488.80. That is the first test, right? So we have a lot more potential, right? From peak to trough, you're looking at 4%, and looking if you're to short, right? Yes, you come down here, you gain a percent, but then you get completely reversed when it comes back up not really worth my time. I rather play the short once we're below the 50 because then my margin of error is very, very small. So looking back at this, right? Nice 4% potential to that be my first target trimming my position of 48 if we're looking bullish and then seeing what it does around 480 right this is a lot of room right here that is no man's land and I can't tell you what's going to happen we could easily gap above 488 80 and then blow right through it go all the way to 500 blow right through it create a new all time week and basically create a bullish engulfing candle for the week. That is very possible with the news catalyst that we have that we're going to discuss later in the video. However, there's a lot of things like I've been saying to the bear team that, hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z before you go X, uh, ABC, which is start breaking key levels like you did this week and just keep breaking them, right? That is very, very potentiating for the bears. I'm just saying don't get ahead of ourselves here, right? This is not where you go full on bear mode. You are getting there, keyword getting there but not there yet. And let's jump over the S&P just so we can give a similar assessment of it. So jumping over to the S&P, we can clearly see that we got 547.41 as the low for the week and honestly our support. Now, this is where it becomes interesting where the NASDAQ comes into play to telling us we're gonna be bullish or bearish because if it breaks its 50, the likelihood that we're coming down to our 50 on the S&P, which is a significantly better bear proposition of 1.7%, especially for the S&P and a gap fill possibly below, that is setting up a more interesting proposition to short the S&P if we break 547.41, because then 547.91 is the level that we just have to basically put our stops at because if we rotate back above, that's not really playing out to the theory. 
We also have 554.19 to the upside. That is where we start looking at bullish theories to run possibly up to 560, where the gap fill exists all the way to basically 563 and subsequently new all time highs at 565.16. So before we get into all the bullish theories, you first need to get above 554.19 to really start looking at that bullish theory. Right now, for me, if you're looking to play the both teams, thesis is to bounce off this rotation retest 547.91 don't break it maybe one or two cents below and then subsequently push higher if you just slam through 547.91 I'd be then looking to, if you're coming back through it again, that's where you could be setting up a bullish rotation to 554.19. I would play it short in the sense of like play this trade very, very slim where you're going to completely close at 554.19 because you're not really sure if it's a dead cap bounce at that point. And then subsequently, if we start looking for that gap fill, then you may re-enter around that gap fill because then you have areas of clear defined, hey, my thesis is breaking versus this big area right here of no man's land that you really don't know. Now, as the market evolves, I obviously will create another video for you guys just to see where we're playing, kind of give you the minutia, the details. And again, remember, fear and greed is sitting at neutral. So it's anyone's game. The subsequently volume increasing, I'm looking at, okay, Okay, there's nothing really telling me that we're going to go up. We do have the catalyst on Tuesday, like we covered with the Google and Alphabet earnings. Remember, that's coming out on Tuesday after close. So we have the catalyst on Tuesday. However, if we're breaking key levels and we can take a look quickly at the charts for those two companies, right? So jumping over to Tesla, looking bullish, however, can absolutely break this below to uh, 232. Be careful of that, especially if Tesla comes out with some horrible guidance or something like that. Looking to have a, a golden cross on the 50 and the 200 after it's had this massive run. So the question is for Tesla, is it going to sustain those earnings? And is it going to justify this price for Tesla? Or are we going to have one of those slam down Tesla moves? Subsequently, Google not looking too healthy. This was like Netflix, where we came in, we hover around the 50, we weren't above the 50 going into earnings. And subsequently, I'm going to learn my lesson, which I should have not played Netflix because we were below the 50. If Google is below the 50, I will not be playing Google on earnings. So that's going to be a key, crucial strategy for me going in. Google was the one that's most bullish out there comparative to like Meta and all them. However, I'm looking at this, I'm saying, okay, which one do I want to play? And right now it be Google out of the two, but if Google's below it, I probably won't play either. However, I will give you guys the bull and the bear thesis for those on the Tuesday video. So like I said, make sure you subscribe and have bell notifications on for that. Also, we have to take a look at the VIX, right? VIX having a massive candle. Uh, I do believe this to be a wrong print at $11, but anything is possible. Uh, looking at this, we're looking at some selling pressure or wickingness of the candle here. So do we continue higher? Do we kind of get up into the 18 territory? We're going to have to see. However, I'll keep you guys appraised of it. One thing I will say is Bitcoin powering up above the 50, looking like it wants to keep tackling these upper prices ahead and thus could be a sign that the greater market is running. We also had Donald Trump basically saying he's going to make Bitcoin a reserve currency. So, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news type of an event comes into question. If you guys haven't seen that, make sure you Google it. Quite an interesting read on that. We got crude that just got slammed down on Friday. So again, this could play into Tom Lee's theory of CPI and all that coming in basically lower as we subsequently move through the months. We'll be covering that in more detail once CPI comes around the next month. However, we do have PCE this week and yields are not looking like they believe the market is gonna have rate cuts, right? Uh, 30 year kind of catching a bounce, but more importantly, that two year, two year actually catching a bounce since Wednesday after having a nice massive fall to 4.5%. So they're basically saying, looking at this, four rate cuts in the next two years as the market is pricing in three rate cuts this year. And we can clearly see the one year and the six month kind of do agree with that pricing. However, these can quickly reverse going into the Federal Reserve meeting and or any subsequent PCE, CPI or PPI news event. So make sure you guys keep yourselves up on your toes for that. And remember, the, watch the levels for the S&P, watch the levels for the NASDAQ because they're gonna be very, very crucial. 
And the levels are going to become even more important now, considering we just got breaking news as I was recording this. And Fatal is with me to cover this. Biden says he is dropping out of the presidential race as Democrats prepare to pass the torch. Dear Lord. So, yeah, guys, I'm so sorry, sorry for not being able to put my part in today's video. But, uh, you know, I figured let's just do the debate section. And uh, you just messaged me like a few seconds ago telling me this. And I'm just like, what is going on? So, yeah. Uh, OK, there's politics to this, right? However, we got to we got to we got to tie this back to the economic side, because why this has always happened when markets aren't open? Can we get like a good, you know, kind of catalyst event where when markets are actually open so that way we can, you know, have fun with the volatility? Yeah, markets. I, I, my prediction, if markets were open right now and this happened and, you know, they always plan it on a Sunday, right? When no one's uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how markets open. It's going to be absolutely interesting to see how everything reacts, because this is uncertainty the number one thing that markets hate is uncertainty because and you may be looking at it like how is it uncertain who the bloody hell is going to be the one running the country bingo bingo and, and and funny too because it's like uh when, when did trump get, sh get, get shot like a last week ago week the week before? La last weekend it was last weekend once again on a sunday so it's like it's like yeah Man. so would you like to you know the uh, the biggest problem right now i mean you just said it is the fact that we have no idea who it's uh well no the election's be. over at this point Go due on. to four states that are critical election laws the delegates for said states because he's not citing health as the issue and even though there is a gray area of he if those delegates could be voting for someone else because it's past the deadline, Maine, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Georgia are all wow. now out of play. Their delegates so cannot green. vote for anyone except the two nominees on the pal on the ballot that was printed prior. So basically three of those, right? Wisconsin, Michigan, and Georgia, which are like the really, really heavy ones there. Oh, man. So, so you essentially handed DJT the election in one fail swoop. Dude, talk about an unprecedented election cycle this year. Oh, my goodness. So market oh crash start goodness. now? I don't know. I, I don't know about that, right? I don't know about that. I don't know yeah. if you saw the RNC uh, when Trump was speaking. He was hitting all the things that we talk about here on the channel. You know, uh, young kids like our age basically not being able to... Um, Afford, afford anything afford housing he have said you that. He said that have he you heard of his while we're on the housing topic have you heard the vegetables uh new proposition for uh how, you know how he made when you thought that his housing bill couldn't get any worse you know the idea of like the starter home selling we covered a while back about four months ago you remember that right that the thing that i nearly blew a gasket over no no the, you blew a gasket like, you, you we just missed like you know it flying out the roof um yeah, let me whole, just now so are you ready yeah, what? He wanted to tack on rent control uh, on top of that. So, you know, oh, if no, it was... I didn't hear that. I didn't oh, okay. hear that. Yes, yes, I did hear that. I think capping it at like... He 5%. Said like, if, yeah, yeah, but he said something else, though. He said, he said like 50000 or $50 or something like that. 50 and units. Like, it would affect any landlord that owned no, 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 50 no. units or more. No, 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 I'm saying the gap. When he said, when he said the 5% thing, I think he said instead of 5%, I think he said like $50 or something like that. Oh, well, it was a ma major gap, but yes, I yes. do know about that. But which regardless, is, by the way, guys, which is by the way, we do not agree with any form of uh, government control uh, telling people how much they can or can't raise raise their prices by. That's as completely communistic. The as Ronald, telling what was that? As Ronald Reagan said, the scariest words are, "I'm from the government and I'm here to help." Yep, yep, yep. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Uh, Trump was saying, I don't know how he's going to help. I he never, he really d didn't go into it. How he's going to help, you know, the younger generations, uh, you know, young millennials and um, Gen Z uh, get back, like get into the housing market, hopefully by increasing supply, you know, hopefully, like, hopefully by doing that. <clears throat> but on the other hand, he's also, Trump was, Saying, hey, you know, I want to, uh, I want to continue the tax cuts. Which, by the way, tomorrow's video on my end, I will be talking about the effects 
uh, of the tax cuts and if Trump doesn't win, if the tax cuts expire, by how much higher you're going to be paying taxes by. Because that's interesting. It's in bone chilling. It's literally it's bone, bone chilling. Yeah, it's absolutely bone chilling. So we are going, I'm going to essentially do, do the math behind that. And that will be for tomorrow's video at 4 p.m. So be on the lookout for that one. Yeah, but let's uh, let's just circle around to the, you know, let's circle back to this in a second. Uh -huh. um, as we look at the economic calendar, right? Nothing happened this week. I'll, I'm going to run through real quick for everyone here. Um, if you lived under a rock, Empire State Manufacturing contracted again. Not really surprising. It's New York. Uh, we had retail sales come out. A little bit stronger sales there. So still having that inflationary ten tendencies there. Wednesday, we had home starts and building permits. And this is kind of a topic I wanted to touch on with you, how you have always been saying the second that rate cut expectations start getting priced into the market, like really, really close, right? Like we're on the precipice of it, that housing is going to start booming. It's start going to start going crazy. And we are starting to see evidence again of the ignition of the crazy 2022 market for a housing with building permits and home starts continuing to go up consecutively now for two months. Right, right. It, it makes sense because think about it. If, 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 if we see interest rates begin to fall, people are going to want to pounce on it because it's not, it's not so much this, uh, this upcoming um, interest rate cut. It's the next one, right? Yep. Because if we see, okay, if interest rates just fell by twenty five by twenty five basis points, I hate saying that, but by twenty five basis points. Um, you know, the next one will be even lower than that. Therefore, if we get it now, then we just have to refinance later when they eventually go back down to zero again. Yep. Meaning a lot more people are going to start taking out more and more loans for the future expectations, right? It's all based on future expectations. Markets are forward looking. However, they rely on past data. Yep. And uh, kind just, of just to share like a housing story real quick, 30 seconds tidbit here. So I drove sure. through a community that I was looking to maybe buy like a rental property just to see how builders were doing it. Mm -hmm. And would you I like I'm looking at these houses. And I'm like, you guys literally just figured out how to cram as much houses in one area oh, as dude. you humanly can. Where oh, I'm dude. like, I'm looking at this. I'm just like. You guys, like, and the thing is, like, they didn't spend any money trying to redevelop the land, right? The hills and everything. Like, there's people's backyards that just drop off, like, a 50-foot hill. And, and I'm like, I'm looking at this. I'm like, so you're charging more for that property than I paid. It's the same builder. And six-month difference. And I'm just like, the, the, people are actually paying for this? And then I drive through it. And there's so many there, available. And I'm just sitting is, here. There's a development by my in-laws and even by us. I kid you not, the houses there are basically, they're townhouses where they're like right next to each other. But you know, it's individual, individual townhouses where you, you could buy it, whereas I'm here right now where I rent a townhouse. But it's a townhouse and it's, it's not an entire house. They're going for like three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars And they're like half, basically, they're, Mike, they're basically like a quarter of your house, basically. And people have lost their minds. And I'm just like, and, I'm, and, and, and as you said, they're cramming a bunch of houses together, um, you know, in quote unquote, increasing the supply, but not really increasing the quality, but still giving as high, like as much of a, of a price of a price tag for lower quality. Yeah. And, what's, is what's and what's surprising to me is if, I don't know if you've ever driven by that area, how many are available? I'm like sitting here. I'm like thinking they're empty. They're, they're empty. They're I'm all like, empty because nobody wants them. This is turning into like, it's scary how you're thinking of how much money is being tied up in these and how it's all hingent on a federal reserve rate cut. I'm like, uh -huh. haven't uh -huh. we heard, seen this story unwind again? Like you have the NVIDIA story, you have the housing story now. I'm like, so, so like I said, so, dot com and oh, had a child. It's called whatever this crash is going to be, whatever year it is. So I want to I want to tie this back to Biden, um, uh, you know, exiting the race here. Yep. Is Powell not going to cut interest rates? He doesn't have a well. Think about it. Because so Trump if you're out, you're hang on, a second, a, hang on a second, hang on a second. Trump has come out literally t saying, telling to Powell, say, saying to Powell, do not cut interest rates. Do not. If your if your future boss is telling you that, I think he's not. This, but at, but at the same time, it's like it's like we don't know because like we thought we thought that he was going to cut interest rates to make Biden look good. 
But now it's like well, you don't have an incentive. You don't have an incentive. That that's a perfect way to say. It. Say it one more time. You don't have an incentive because now the ins here's the thing. Now is the government going to start manipulating the PCCP lie numbers to show higher inflation to justify keeping? It's going to be very. It's going to be a very interesting month now because when I thought things were getting boring, wow, you no, just dude. you just threw a whole bunch of kerosene on that fire and uh, it, the the trucks backing up with some more. I mean, I mean, we're beyond. We're adding kerosene with gasoline jet fuel at this point. We're adding yeah, jet, we're jet fuel, fuel now. At this point. But but I mean, hang on a second. Hang on a second. And let's add on top of this as well. Next week it is earnings week, bro. It, I, I know. Is, I, would I, you I like me to throw chance. more fire onto that statement? Even I didn't get a chance to, to to do my part, guys. But I'll do it here really quickly. On Monday, the main one is like Verizon. We also have a few other banks, like Truist Bank. We also got things like uh, let's see, AGNC, Zion's Bank Corporation. On Tuesday, Mike, we got Tesla. I did cover and that Google. in the beginning, by the way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Tesla so and Google and Phase, Visa, Coca Cola. On Wednesday, we got Chipotle, AT&T, IBM. Uh, and then Thursday, we got American Airlines, Avvi, Dexcom, Skechers, and, and Honeywell, uh, and Raytheon. And then on Friday, we got 3M, Bristol Myers Squibb, and a few other ones too. I will be putting this, guys, I will be putting this link in our Discord. So if you want to check out uh, you know, upcoming earnings, make sure to join our Discord because I always put every, every week's earnings, I always put it on the Discord. So, yeah. Yeah, and the you weren't here for this part when I talked about net speculative positions actually didn't increase even though the market fell. So I'm like, mm, I give okay. I tip my hat to the bears because you guys have finally learned not to make the dumb mistake of going all in. Right. And here's the thing: you guys may actually want to go all in if the market plays out the way it may play out. Right. 50-50 right now, but definitely. But what I was saying, on Tuesday and Thursday, we do have a light news week. Um, we have new home sales on Wednesday, some more global remote. Tuesday is going to be the big day for Google and Tesla, and we'll cover that in just a second. I gave my analysis in the beginning. However, uh, Thursday, we get preliminary print for GDP. So... Is it going to be 1.9 as they're expecting? Previously it was 1.4, but that was the previous quarter. And we've seen the major GDP indicators shrinking over the past several weeks. So do you think it's going to be coming in as this rosy number? Or do you think they'll give you a rosy number and then subsequently keep revising it lower going into the end of the quarter? Maybe that, right? But that also, now they have no incentive to continue rosying up the numbers either. Unless, unless the, um, the, new, the replacement is somebody that they actually really do like, or the replacement is somebody that, that they believe, and by they I mean the DNC, uh, who, may, who, may, who they believe also has a chance to win. Which, unless, aside from one person, I don't see it. Well, it's so, going to be, you remember, Kamala is the heir apparent. So... I don't know well, about you, right but now, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Right now, Hillary's trending, so I don't even know. This oh, is please no, be, please yeah. no, <laughs> please I not mean, a rematch of that. <laughs> dude, this will be, this is going to be an insane, insane next few months. Dude, it's, oh my goodness, we have to live stream the election. I already yeah. took, I'm taking off uh, November 6th, just so that way I can stay throughout the whole entire night on November 5th, because <laughs> this is insane right now. This is going to be absolutely crazy, so... Aside from that, Mike, uh, do you want to take a look at the uh, at the? Um, we do have a PC, but oh, the expectations PC? again. They do this to us every time, right? They give us the month. They don't give us the year when we record a video. However, I will keep you guys updated on the next video for Tuesday. Most likely, we will have expectations then. Um, if I look at this right, months boat increasing. I think two point six flat. Again, right? We saw the 2.8 trend drop to 2.6. Are, are we going right. to get a revision back to, like, let's say, 2.7, where the 2.6 isn't that rosy and we get 2.7 again? All right. So, and lastly, we got the fear and greed. Where are we at? Last time, I think we were nearing a. Wow, dude, we are. Talk about. 50 last 50. Time we were, last time we were nearing greed, and right now we're straight up smack in the middle, man. And then with all of this news happening, oh man, this is insane. This is absolutely insane. All I'm going to say but is futures tonight is going to be crazy. Six o'clock. Six o'clock, guys. Six o'clock. Six p.m. is when, six p.m. Eastern is when futures open. But I think that will pretty much end it for this video, guys. Again, I'm so terribly sorry that my I didn't do the the uh, biggest losers and gainers. I, Do you again, want to touch base real quick on uh, Google Alphabet expectations? 
Sure, let's let's take a look at that. So your favorite, well. your favorite. Uh, wow, dude, 31, 34 to one. Oh yep. my goodness, are you gonna play it? If it's above the fifty, again, remember how net I said Netflix. If it wasn't above the fifty, I wasn't gonna play it. Then I played it, and then barely got out when my skin alive. I'm yeah. gonna listen to my own advice this time. And if Google Google on the chart basis is looking weak, I'm gonna see if this actually trends. Like you know, with Netflix, it was jumping to more bearish through the week. Mm -hmm. So we'll mm -hmm. keep, I'll keep an eye on that, right? I'll put on the Tuesday video the plays I'm going to be doing for it. Okay. And would you like to guess Tesla? 50-50. Um, you are absolutely correct. I don't know why. Something just told me. Something just told me. It's 50-50 it's with Tesla. Because <laughs> that's probably the most obvious slash correct answer because no one in their right mind knows what's going to happen with Tesla. It's just going to go boomtown one way or another and literally flip a coin. Yep. Wow. 26, 50, 50. That's so crazy. But um, I mean, we have a ton of earnings on, on top of that, but this, this week's going to be just jam packed with volatility. Oh, it's going to be great. So guys, thank you so much for stopping by. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. Make sure to smash the like button, of course, share and, um, and uh, comment. It really does help here. Again, our goal guys is just to, um, we just want to grow this as a business, right? We just want to grow this as a business. I'm sorry that my part wasn't uh, up today, but next week I will. And again, for tomorrow's video, I will be putting it up normally like four. It'll be based on Trump's um, uh, new, uh, tax plan. If he continues to, 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 if he continues it, or if it expires, then how is that going to affect the middle class? Because it's a it's a pretty big big deal. And um, also something to note as well. We will. When will we be live streaming this this week, good sir? Tuesday and Thursday. Well, we can't do Thursday. Why not? Um, and here's the reason why. So on Thursday, I'm actually going to go on a fellow uh, Rumble streamer's um, stream. Okay. Uh, just me. Yep. His name is Darren Ruth. He talks about like um, he talks about like uh, you know, current events when it comes to like uh, Rumble and that kind of stuff. Um, so I, a, a lot of no notable people have gone on his um, on his on his on his stream. So he's he's offered. He's offered an invitation to, to us slash me, so I will be joining him for that. Right. Also, we don't have really much going on on Thursday when it comes to earnings. Um, you know, well, Thursday isn't really. We do have NYCB. I guess. I guess. But I'll make I mean, a video for that. I'll make a video okay. for that. So Tuesday stream, obviously Tuesday because of Google. Stream, uh, Tuesday Google. stream, and maybe one more. I don't know Friday, depending we'll on how we feel about it. We'll see. Yeah, but guaranteed, 100% Tuesday. Mainly for Tesla and of course Alphabet and maybe a third one, but we'll see when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, that's what's gonna. That's the plan for this week. If anything changes, we'll let everybody know. And um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's going to be an insane week. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness! Take a look at that VIX. Take a look at that VIX because that's gonna go bonkers. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Peace out, and we will see you all next time.